If we look at the typical structure for a fluid structure coupling problem in LS Dyna, what we can see is we have five main files, and one of them is the main coupling file called main.k, and this file takes care of the parameters such as the time step, the inlet velocity for instance, it includes most files, and takes care of the coupling. Then in terms of the fluid simulation, there will be a fluid mesh file for the geometry and a settings file which will take care of uh, all the characteristics of the domain uh, such as the density and the viscosity of the fluid and as well you can see that there will be a solid settings file with the solid geometry within inside the solid mesh uh, and the solid settings as well will have some properties about the solid domain such as uh, rigidity elastic modulus and as well will determine uh, whether the analysis is explicit or implicit for the solid part and you can see that we already have the fluid mesh and the solid mesh files ready. Now what we've done is we've added three more files which are the uh, fluid settings, solid settings and main file for you to be able to use and we're going to show you what these uh, files imply in terms of the simulation and as well we're going to go through as well how to edit the fluid mesh and the solid mesh to make them ready. So these three files will be supplied. However the solid mesh and the fluid mesh um, you can create yourself. In terms of the solid mesh to make it ready, um, as you can see, there is mostly element and uh, node information. For example, here, all these element IDs are associated to a part ID, which is 44 for the flap. And as well, each node has its individual set of uh, coordinates. And then we have a boundary SPC set, which is a boundary condition set, where everything is restricted in X, Y, Z, but not in rotation in X, Y, and Z. And then we have a list of nodes, which are constrained. So the only edit we have to make for this file is that we have to remove the define curve, which is a remainder from the export. So we simply remove that uh, keyword, we save, and the file is ready. Now, if we open the fluid mesh, similarly, there's not much editing to do. Again, there's node element information, node information connected to parts. As you can see, and as there are m much more elements for the uh, fluid part, it's normal that the file is much larger. And here we have node information as well. and the last N keyword, which is ends the uh, DK file. So what we have to do to make the elements ready for ICFD, the CFD solver to use, we have to change this keyword to mesh surface element rather than element shell. This makes the elements usable by the incompressible solver, essentially. So element shell becomes mesh surface element. And then if we look for our other keyword, which is going to be the node keyword, if we look at the node keyword, we have to change it to mesh surface node. So node becomes mesh surface node. Once we've changed those two keywords, the file is once again essentially ready for the simulation.
we check for any other keyword, the end keyword is still there. We don't need to remove the title one. But if you wish, you can do it out of convenience. It won't affect the simulation. So here we've done it out of clarity. You can just save the file now and it's ready to run as well. So essentially now our mesh files for the fluid and the solid are ready. In this tutorial, we have supplied three additional files, um, the fluid settings, the main file, and the solid settings file. And the reason for this is uh, so that these files can be a basis for in your future if you want to create more complex FSI problems. Um, so what we're going to do now is look in the text editor how these files were generated um, and have a look at the individual keywords and commands and what they mean. So if we open this file in the text editor, the first thing if we look at the, uh, the main file, the main.k file, we see is that there is a number of parameters. So there's a title, which we've created for the simulation, which will be showed in the post-processing. And there's a number of parameters we've created. So these parameters are useful in all the other files. Um, for example, there is one parameter which is T end, which in this case is six milliseconds. It's the end time of the simulation. Um, there are also other parameters we've created, such as the time step for the mechanical simulation, which is one millisecond, the time step for the incompressible solver, and the output time step. This uh, DT out output interval is quite interesting because it designates the amount of times the software will output a results file, which will then be used in the post-processing. So depending on the amount of data you want to generate from a simulation, you can alter that. And as well, we've defined a velocity parameter, which is essentially our inlet velocity. And here it's 500 millimeters per second. And then we have three more uh, commands, but in order to explain them better, first I'm going to go through the other parameters in the fluid and the solid settings in order to make sure everything's quite clear. So here we're in the fluid settings file, and the first thing we see is that we're including the fluid mesh. So as you can remember from the uh, slide before, uh, the fluid settings file includes the fluid mesh. And then we have a series of control cards. So this first control um, designates that the simulation will end at the T end time, and it will be run on the time step, which is specified as a parameter, DTICFD. The ICFD control output command allows the solver to output data at the interval we specified in the main file, which here is DT out. And as well, options four and six specify that the output formats will be VTK and D3 plot, which are useful if you use different type of uh, post-processing software. And here we're going to have a look at the boundary conditions, which have been set in the settings file. There are two types of uh, boundary conditions which can be set, one in terms of pressure and one in terms of velocity. Typically, in a CFD simulation, the pressure at the outlet will be set to zero. So here you can see, in terms of the prescribed pressure, so part ID2, which designates the outlet, is associated to the load curve 2. And that load curves correspond to a value of 0 across the whole simulation. From 0 to the end, it's a value of 0. So we set the pressure at 0 at the outlet. And we also set a value of 0 for the velocity at the inlet in x and the y directions. So as you can see, for the degrees of freedom, 1 designates x, for instance, 
2 designates y. So in those two directions, the velocity is set to 0. However, for the degree of 3 to 3, so the z direction, we associate the first curve, which is just a steady input of velocity throughout the whole simulation, which is 500 millimeters per second. As this is a channel, we set a non-slip boundary condition on the wall, which part ID 3 designates the wall and part ID 4 designates the flap. We also have to define an ICFD section and an ICFD material. The section defines the fact that the surfaces are very thin and that can be used by the incompressible solver. We also have defined different parts, one for the inlet, one for the outlet, one for the wall, and one for the flap. To these parts, we've associated a section as well as a material with the section ID and the material ID. We also define a material for the fluid, which has a certain density and a certain viscosity. And as our mesh was created in millimeters, we have to adapt our units for the simulation, meaning that the density, for example, was converted from kilograms per meters cubed to grams per millimeters cubed, as you can see here. However, in our unit system, the pascals and the seconds are not affected, so the viscosity value stays the same. That's another important factor in LS Dyna is that you always have to stay quite consistent with your system of units. Now what we do is we define a volume which is enclosed by a set of surfaces. So for example, here in our case, the inlet, the outlet, the wall and the leaflet define a certain volume. So that new volume has a new part ID as well, which is number five. However, we assign the same section in the same materials and we bound it by four part IDs, which are one, two, three and four. And that creates a volume for the simulation. Then what's quite handy with LS Dyna is that the solver takes care of meshing the volume as long as you provide a surface mesh. So we create a new volume with ID 1. And that volume is bound by, this time, only the inlet, the outlet, and the wall. Because then we, in, we use the embed shell keyword to embed the leaflet within the volume. So anytime you include any shells in your fluid domain, you have to include them as embedded shells rather than in the mesh volume keyword. Or else the solver will have to tell you that your volume is open and that it cannot solve. Now that we finish with the fluid settings file, we're going to have a look at the solid settings which include as well the solid mesh. Then there's as well a control termination keyword, which designates the fact that the simulation will end at the end time specified in the main file. Here as well we have a control keyword called control hourglass, which suppresses the output of the solver when there are hourglass deformation modes which are deformation modes in solid mechanics which are non-realistic. So the solver is able to suppress that output. The control implicit general settings, for example, if we set the IM flag to zero, means the simulation will be run in implicit mode. However, as the deformations are quite large in the simulation, we'll run it in mode one, which is the explicit mode, under the time step, which is DTMEC. And as well, here we have a set of uh, keywords, control implicit dynamics, control implicit solution, which I will not go too much in detail as they are quite complex. Uh, so you can always refer to the manual for more information. What these uh, keywords essentially do is uh, 
improve the stability of the calculation by limiting the amount of iterations which are possible per time step and uh, limiting divergence. Now in the database cards, there's the uh, once again the output for the solid part, which is set as DT out. The same interval we've used uh, in the main file. And now we define the properties of the material. Just as we did in the solid mesh, we've defined it as a part 44 with section ID 44 and material 44 which correspond to the section shell and material elastic keywords. And this material that we're going to use for the flap has a certain density, a certain elastic modulus, and as well a certain Poisson ratio. The shell, which is defined again as number 44, has a certain type of element form, which in this case is first order uh, linear elements. If you use different element forms, you can have, for example, uh, higher order element formulations or those kinds of things. And then as well, the thickness of the shell is one millimeters. If we return to the main file now, we can have a look at these three final commands. And these are quite important regarding the FSI. For example, as the ICFD boundary FSI command allows the solver to couple both motions. So what we've done is we've coupled part four, which is the flap, as an FSI boundary. So it's going to be subjected to the pressure that the fluid exerts on it. And as well, as the mesh is going to move in this problem, we're going to use the ICFD control adapt size with option one, which means that the solver will remesh when it judges that elements have uh, a quality that is too poor to run a stable simulation. So sometimes this is after five iterations, sometimes after uh, more iterations, it will remesh the volume. And then the ICFD control FSI is another control card which can allow you to change the birth time and the death time of the simulation. By default, the death time uh, value is the end time of the simulation. But the birth time, however, you can choose to delay the start of an FSI simulation if that's more relevant to your problem. In this case, we've set it to zero as FSI is going to start as soon as the simulation starts. That's more relevant to the physical problem we're approaching. And once again, we include the fluid settings and the solid settings in the main file. And once we've done this, all our files are ready to uh, be run in LSDyna.